Hey there, gang. I want to walk through some images. Let's talk about images. So there's nothing worse than when you've been on Redbubble or TeePublic for three years, four years, five years, and you start building up a really large portfolio of designs, and you're terrified because you're thinking, are my images really legal? Is someone going to come after me and say, hold on, that picture of Super Duper Man looks just enough like Superman that now I'm banned forever from Redbubble or TeePublic. Well, let's throw away these designs. Let's not worry about this. And let's worry more about, let's spend some time looking at designs that are completely in the public domain. So what does public domain mean? Okay. Public domain means that it's owned by the public. Okay, it's not owned by any individual author or artist. So that means anyone can use public domain work without obtaining permission. You're going to see this C with a line through it a few times when you start looking at public domain images. If you see public domain, you're full steam ahead. All right, you can use public domain works. So the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about the first, the first resource that I want to talk about is NASA. Okay. So I'm going to pop open NASA's website here and there's NASA.gov and there's multimedia image gallery and it's pretty easy to find this. So rather than memorizing this, I'm just going to type into Google NASA image gallery. And basically you get the image gallery comes up. So it's NASA images. Click on that. And that brings us to this NASA page. Now, if you go to the NASA, um, the, uh, the drop down menus and you see galleries, there's going to be a usage and copyright. And if you click on that, your heart will go up into your throat and it'll say, hold on here. It says NASA is, you know, it should not be used as branding devices. It shouldn't be used here. It shouldn't be used there. It shouldn't be used for commercial content, blah, blah, blah. All right, fine. I will say that if you just Google is NASA images public domain or are, sorry, terrible grammar there, are NASA images public domain, we can see here it says under United States copyright law, works created by the U.S. federal government or its agencies cannot be copyrighted. Therefore, pictures by NASA are legally in the public domain. So look, I can't say to you today that I swear on a stack of Bibles that I personally guarantee that NASA will never come after you for, for using an image. I can only say, if you go on any site like Redbubble, TeePublic, Society6, Etsy, Merch by Amazon, people use space images all the time. So as far as I'm concerned, NASA's good. So I would recommend that you use, or at least take a look at NASA images. There's a lot of great things here. If we go to the gallery and we go to image galleries, there's a lot of great image galleries here. We've got the image of the day that pops up. These are super, super high definition images as well. It's a lot of them. There's space rovers, there's astronauts, airplanes, some really cool pictures, really high definition pictures of rings on planets, things like that. So you know what? I've used these in the past. I've had great success using these, coming up with some beautiful, spacey looking pictures. And these are all public domain photos. So I'm letting you know, I think NASA, great opportunity. So that's one option that you can look at, okay? The next one that I would suggest you take a look at is Wikimedia Commons, not Wikipedia, Wikimedia. Okay, and you find that pretty easily by going into Google and typing in Wikimedia and you'll see Commons. Wikimedia Commons are freely usable media files. And it's not just pictures. They've got audio files, video files, but most of it is pictures. A lot of it is pictures and they're beautiful pictures. Okay, the stuff in here, there's a video down here. The stuff in here is all free. It's all public domain. Now, if you don't believe any individual photo, if you see a photo and you go, man, it just, it looks too good to be true. Great. Well, let's pick on the picture of the day here. Let's click on it. And any picture you click on, there'll be these more details down at the bottom. Okay. When I click on more details down at the bottom, it's going to show us the copyright status. 
So as I scroll on down, it says licensing. Okay, now it does say some rights reserved, but that's okay. It says this file is licensed and you're free to share. You're free to adapt. Now, under the following conditions, it says attrition. You must give appropriate credit if changes were made. Now, all I can say, and I know this is going to sound a bit jaded, good luck. All right, if I uploaded a picture of this butterfly, and then I, two years from now, see a t-shirt that's got a similar looking butterfly, am I really going to go after this person? So again, you use your judgment. This is not a picture of Superman. This is not a picture of Spider-Man. There's a really, you know, these are high profile pictures of an animal that you can use to run through Photoshop filters. You can add some lens flare on here. You could change the colors on it. You can use this as a base design in order to make, you know, a set of butterfly designs for a t-shirt or a coffee mug or, or whatever it is. So Wikimedia is a great resource to use. Wikimedia Commons. And then you can basically search through. There's categories, there's images, right? Now there's videos and audio files, but we mostly care about the images. So when we call this up, we can see there's all these different images that come up. And these are, these are like categories, right? And there's a whole bunch of different categories. So I'd encourage you to just scroll on through and you'll find all sorts of neat different pictures. And again, on the whole, you can use these without worrying that the Gestapo is going to knock down your door in the middle of the night and demand that you hand over your Redbubble account. This is pretty easy public domain stuff here. Now, the third one that I want to walk through is the Library of Congress. This is the United States Library of Congress. And it literally says free to use and reuse. So this is content that it's free to use and reuse. Now, what I did is I Googled, okay, Library of Congress, free to use. And there it comes up. I hate telling you guys like what the website is because I can never remember the website. So I just Google it or I bookmark it. So here it is, Library of Congress, free to use and reuse sets. Now, if you scroll down this page, you're going to see a whole bunch of public domain, basically, you know, free to use images. And then all of a sudden it ends and you go, well, is that it? Is that all the, is that all the, that the entire Library of Congress has? No, no, no. When you click on, so here's free to use and reuse, autumn and Halloween. When I click on this picture, what happens is it opens up an entire category of pictures. And as I scroll on down, you can see there's way more pictures. So there's lots and lots of lots in the Library of Congress. Basically anything that's on a Library of Congress page, again, because of what we saw earlier with public domain, this is a piece of the government. This is a subset of the government. So the Library of Congress has, by definition, public domain images. So we can use these without worrying that we're going to get busted on some sort of copyright. Now, I do want to point out, when you see something like Dracula and it's Bram Stoker, this is the book. So the book is in the public domain. That does not mean that a recent movie and the images therein would be public domain. Let me repeat that. If you have a work that's a book, that does not necessarily mean that all the inherent works based on the book are in the public domain. Another example would be Wizard of Oz. The book, The Wizard of Oz, is in the public domain. But the movie with Judy Garland is not in the public domain. So you can use Dra Dracula, Bram Stoker, you could use the book itself, but you can't use a recent image. If they came out with a Dracula movie two years ago, you couldn't use stills from that movie, for example. Here's a nice Houdini poster. And again, these are some pretty high image, you know, like high resolution images, right? So, you know, here's the image. You can make it pretty big, you know. I'll just do like view image, for example. It's pretty nice. So you can, you know, use that image if you wanted to use it as a baseline for a t-shirt or a coffee mug or that sort of thing. So that's an idea, okay? The other one that I want to talk about here is Pixabay, all right? Pixabay is pretty easy to find. You just go onto Google and you type in the word Pixabay. 
comes up and it says right on here, 1.9 million plus stunning free images to use anywhere, free for commercial use, no attrition required. I love Pixabay. These are great high quality images and they repeat this all the time. These are free, free, free. Okay, so you can use these images and you can use them without worrying the, uh, about copyright or trademark, okay? There's a nice peacock there. Now at the top, you're gonna see sponsored images by iStock or sponsored images by Shutterstock or whatever it is. If you click on these, you're gonna to get to a site that asks you for money. But the ones underneath, these are free images. So if you really want you know, to have a, some sort of a, you know, let's say we're gonna do the, the peacock thing here, you know, this is a really nice high quality photo. Now, when you, it says right here, free for commercial use, no attrition attribution required. When I click free download, it's gonna ask me to log in, but when you log in, it gives you options, different size resolutions, sometimes even an SVG file, which is a scalable vector graphic. So again, you can get some really nice, beautiful pictures here, and you can create a pretty stunning portfolio just based on these works. Another similar one, that I like is called Unsplash, okay, unsplash.com. Again, really easy to find. Just go to Google, type in Unsplash. Beautiful and free images. Beautiful free images and photos that you can download and use for any project. Woohoo! I like free. So these are freely usable images. Now again, if you're not sure, you can always click on the website says your freely usable images and it's even got a license that's going to pop up all photos can be downloaded and used for free commercial and non-commercial purposes no permission needed okay so again you know i would encourage you have a look through unsplash let's just look up you know cat for example it's always my go-to and we can see here we've got cat images now again you're going to get the occasional sponsored image but there's lots of high profile pictures here that you can download again download for free small medium large original size and there is a pretty nice high quality image that you can use isn't he cute okay so again you can download these images for free you don't need to worry about trademark infringement there's so many high quality images online. It always breaks my heart when I hear about somebody getting banned on Redbubble and TeePublic because people are going after things like Marvel and DC and Disney. It's like, don't bother. There's so many gorgeous public domain images. If we use our imagination, we can have a huge portfolio that's better than trademarked images because we created something that's unique and something that somebody will want. So I hope that helps guys. There's a few different ideas there for you. If you like what you saw today, as always, please do hit that subscribe button. I very much value your comments and your feedback. Thank you so much.